So uh, we're working with GitHub here, and uh, we're just in class, and that's what this video is about. We're going to see how to clone a repo. So whether you're watching this video on YouTube because you're in this class and you need to review it, or you're just on the web and you're like, how do I clone a GitHub repo? That's what we're going to see. And the first thing you, I want to share with you is something called LastPass. And so LastPass is a password management. And, uh, and you could download and install LastPass on your computer and on your phone. And it's going to keep all your user. And I don't have internet. It's going to keep all. It seems like I just had internet. It's going to keep all of your. Uh, this is my test. Do I have internet? Do I go to Reddit? I don't know why LastPass. Whatever. But LastPass is going to keep all of your uh, passwords and usernames, and it's going to make them really difficult to remember, really difficult to break, long, complicated characters. And then you can always look it up on your cell phone if you need your password and just type it in manually, or you can log into LastPass on your computer and just automatically logs you in. So it's super useful for remembering passwords and getting logged in, and uh, I really recommend it. So the next thing we're going to look at is GitHub, and. Uh, so my user account is goes to 11 and uh, for this class we're working with the repository HTML CSS bootcamp that's on mine that's what I called it so if I came to this and I was like okay I come to school and I sit down on a school computer and these school computers get wiped clean every time they get turned off everything that's been put on gets erased and just gets a fresh image each time and so on my school computer, I'd sit down and restart it, go into the Mac side, and, uh, and then I'd log into GitHub, which allows me to come here to this repo, and I'm going to choose clone or download. And so here I could clone with SSH or HTTPS. So if I do HTTPS, I'm going to have to use my username and password to log into my account. So this is the way you'll do it at school because you haven't set up SSH. SSH stands for Secure Shell. If And that means that you could put in some uh, asymmetric keys. You could put in, use asymmetric public, asymmetric encryption, right? And so that's a public key cryptography. Public key cryptography or asymmetrical cryptography. Okay, and that contrasts with, uh, I'm just looking to see if there's symmetric here. See what this is, symmetric key algorithm. So I'm just going to symmetric encryption wiki, see if that brings me in the same place or if they have a separate. Yeah, symmetric key encryption. So we have a public key and a symmetric key, and I'm just giving you this information FYI. So if you wanted to, you could set this dope donkey stuff up at home. If I was hanging out with just my friends, I'd say it a little bit differently. But you can set up this dope donkey stuff at home. <laughs> and, uh, and to set it up, I'm going to go just on the internet, you know, generate SSH key Mac. Okay? And so I'm going to generate an SSH key on a Mac, which basically is just enter this command at the Mac. SSH-keygen-t and then space RSA. And that'll generate an SSH key. And, uh, and if I do that, I just go to my terminal and I enter that. It says generating public private key pair. It's going to be put at users Todd McLeod dot SSH uh, and then this file ID underscore RSA. Well, I already have that there. So no thanks is what I'm going to put. And then that and it generated no thanks right somewhere. Now, if I look, ls-la, right, ls-la, let me just make this all a little bit bigger. If I look, no thanks and no thanks pub got created. That's a, that's a, I just did that look, and I'm like, man, that was, you ever do expressions, and you're like, that totally makes me think of that person. Yeah. Anybody know who I just thought of when I did that? Raise the eyebrows, bite the lower lip. 
thumbs up. That's um. I'm totally spacing on one of our president's <laughs> names. That's so weird. Monica Lewinsky and Bill Clinton. Bill, Bill Clinton, thank you. <laughs> that's my Bill Clinton. That's why I, I didn't intend to do that, but as soon as I did, I'm like, oh, that's what Bill Clinton does. That's so weird that I forget his name. So I'm going to remove that no thanks. And I just need no thanks because it's not a directory. And so now if I do that LSLA, it's gone. But I can also see here I have this SSH folder because inside there, cd.ssh, I've already got my ID RSA and ID RSA pub. That's asymmetric keys. I've got a public key and I've got a private key. Public key I could share and give to anybody in the world. So I just cat that public key. And I'm a little bit paranoid, so I'm not even going to show that. But I just cat that, and I copy all of it. Everything that prints out, it says like, you know, SSH key and all this stuff. And then I go into GitHub, and I go into my settings. And I go into SSH keys, and I just do new SSH key. And, uh, you know, I've got two in here. And I give it the name of the machine that I want to give it. And then that key, and now GitHub has my pub public key. So GitHub can encrypt stuff, right? Anybody with my public key, that key right there, can use this key to encrypt something, and only that key will unencrypt it. It's an asymmetric key. They're not the same. Symmetric, same. Asymmetric, not the same. So anybody, I could give that to anybody in the world. They'll be able to encrypt stuff. Send it to me. Nobody else could understand what was sent to me. I could decrypt it and know what was sent to me. What is GitHub going to send to me? They're going to send me a symmetric key. Because there's no way for us to have private communication with asymmetric keys. Right? Like you use my public key and you encrypt something and send it to me, I decrypt it with my private key. If I then was going to encrypt something and send it to you and you would decrypt it with this, somebody with that also could intercept it and decrypt it too because I gave public key to anybody in the world. So that doesn't work. It's not secure. Anybody with a public key can decrypt the transmission. So what you do is you start out with asymmetric keys. Anybody in the world can have my public key. They encrypt stuff, send it to me. I could decrypt it. What is GitHub going to send to me? They're going to send me a key for both encryption and decryption. It's a symmetric key. We will have the same key. They encrypt it, send it to me. I receive it. I could then take that key they sent me, encrypt stuff, and send it to them. And with that same key, they could decrypt it and read it, and then they could re-encrypt stuff and send it back to me, and I could decrypt it, and then create a message and encrypt it and send it back to them. We use the same key for communication, for encrypting and decrypting. We have a symmetric key. Only I have it, and only GitHub has it, and it's only for this one conversation, and then it's gone. We get rid of it. And so those symmetric keys allow us to do both encryption and decryption on both sides of the conversation. This only allows us to do encryption on one side of the conversation. Anybody out there in the world could encrypt stuff and send it to me. And decryption on my side of the conversation. So sender encrypts, receiver decrypts. Asymmetric. But with a symmetric, we could both encrypt and decrypt both sides of the conversation. And it's secure. That's cool. So we start out with this. They encrypt a key to me. I decrypt it and then we use that key. We both have that key. And so when I give them this public key, they're able to send me a key. I decrypt it, so it was encrypted when they sent it to me. I decrypt what they sent me, get that key, and now we can communicate back and forth uh, uh, authenticated. And that allows me to authenticate because they send me some message encrypted. I decrypt it and then I see what that message is. I re encrypt it, right, and I send it back to them. They decrypt decrypt it and they know that I was able to decrypt the original one which means I'm authenticated. 
cool donkey stuff. You don't have to enter your username and password. And this is where it goes, which is where it gets created when you do that SSH key gen. How many people knew that? That's how it works. Isn't that cool? Very. But, so that would be if you wanted to clone with SSH. Because then you have those keys and you don't have to enter your username and password. Here, i got to enter my username and password. Okay, so here is what I want to clone. And so I just copy that. And then I go to my terminal and I just choose some folder. So I'm going to CD into my user directory. Users Todd McLeod. And I just choose some folder. So I'm going to make a directory. There's a new command for you. Make dir. Make a directory. So put that into your notes. Make dir. I was born in a campfire hurricane. How did the lyrics go? <laughs> so make dir, and uh, and then I'm going to make a directory in temp for class code. Right? Whatever. So there's my directory, and I could uh, cd into temp for class code. And now I'm going to do git clone and that URL. And I apparently didn't get the entire URL correct. So I'm going to go back and grab it again. Copy. Git clone HBS. There we go. Okay. Cool. And now if I do an ls, I've got that folder in there. I could cd into that folder. And if I wanted to, I could create a file. So I just created a file without putting anything in it. If I wanted to, and touch is a way to just quickly create a file. I could just also, I thought, well, I might as well put something in it. Nano temp file. Put something in it. Control X to exit, save it, enter, boom, cat it, right? Something's in there. Now if I do, so there's make dir, there's touch, there's nano, there's cat. Put those into your notes. Anybody have questions about what any of those do? This cat, those cat just prints oh. the stuff out. Touch just creates a file, does nothing with it. I didn't need to do that there. I could just nano it. What is nano? Opens a text editor and allows me to nano opens a text editor and allows me to add some text to it. No. So now I'm going to do my git status. It says, "Hey, you got a new file." Okay, let's add that. Git add dash dash all git commit dash m adds temp file and then git push. Guess what it's going to do? What's your username? I enter my username, I enter my password, I push my code up. I do that all through class, right? And then at the end of class, make sure everything's pushed, delete the directory. So I'd come up, you know, whatever, it's going to fail. I come back to my user account. I remember that the directory I put in was temp for class code. So I'm going to remove recursively with force temp. I don't know what the hell's in there, but I called it temp, so it must not be important. And I'm going to remove recursively with force temp for class code. That stuff's all off this computer now. Everything got pushed up to my, my main repo, shut the computer off, go home. Yeah, yeah. You just log into GitHub. Clone. You might not even have to log in. You could just clone it down and log in on the terminal. Push your code. Work on your code. Push it up. You know, make sure you're all pushed. Delete it. Shut the computer off. You're done. A flash drive or anything. You have version history of all your work. 
So that's, uh, that's cloning with HTTPS as opposed to SSH, but you also have some understanding of SSH now. That's sweet. And you, you figured out how symmetric and asymmetric encryption keys work for authentication. That's sweet. Like, you just got good knowledge. You, you understand things that half, of a, half the class at Fresno State who are probably juniors in comp sci at Fresno State, you know, like when I show them this stuff I'm teaching out there, half the class doesn't know this stuff. They're like, whoa. What's up? So if it's a directory, recursively with force means this directory and anything under it. Recursion just means keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it until it's all done. Okay, so I have to write that before I tell what file I want to do. Directory. directory. If it's just a file, you just say remove. Okay. So but if it's directory, recursively, and then with force, force means I don't care what errors you get, this is being destroyed now. All yeah, all yeah. So make sure that you're okay with it going away because it's gone once you do that. Dude, you can delete your whole computer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you hit the wrong keystroke, there's no, like, are you sure? Yeah. Like, you know, GUI, they add in, are you sure? Do you really want to delete your entire hard drive right now? At the terminal, it's just like, Guess you know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> but you should always be coding in such a way that if this computer got stolen, destroyed, you know, because a meteor shot out of space and blasted right through it on your desk, or you accidentally hit R, RM RF, the whole drive, you should be able to be like, oh, well, let's just put. It you know, reinstall the operating system and bring everything back down. Everything should always be backed up somewhere else. In reality, you know, there'd be things I lost off this computer. But, um, you know, 98% of what I need, I have on remote stuff. GitHub or Google Drive. And there'd be a few things I'm like, oh, I lost that picture of me. I'm going to have to go get that somewhere. Everything should be backed up. Sweet! So I want you to work with GitHub. Get, you've, you're logged in. I want you to clone down to your, if you're already on your machine, just create another directory and clone down to it. And just do what I redid with HTTPS and username and password and push up a temporary file and then delete that directory. Just get used to that cloning workflow. Any other questions? How many of you are stoked? Like, man, I'm learning good stuff. Like, this is good. This is <laughs> this is like on point, right? All right. So let's let's learn that together and get get reclone your repo to your computer, whether you're on a school computer or your own computer. You can still just create a temporary directory, clone it down, push up a change, log in, push it, delete it, and you're like, oh, I get it. Cloning is like things like not you know that's like you know, next level GitHub, first level is like, oh, okay, I, I was able to create a repo and get it down working on my computer. But understanding, you could just really quickly bring everything down, clone it, work with it, HPS versus SSH, push it up, delete it, understanding that's like, wow, he's hitting our level of expertise with GitHub. That's like stage two. Oh no, I had my window big the entire recording. All the commands are going to be hidden. That sucks. Oh well, the intent was still there. <laughs>